You know, all off season we talked about trade proposals and things like that, and you know, possibly potentially, you know, people being shipped to the Clippers or the Clippers making some possible outlandish trades that didn't go through yet, but they're in the works. And you know, with all that being said and all this commotion about the Clippers and everybody not being healthy and all these things and trades and all this type of stuff you're gonna hear in the off season, the one person I think the Clippers need to find a way to keep or the one the one thing I think the Clippers need to do is find a way to keep a player like Norman Powell because to me Norman Powell is one of them type of players he's he's very versatile he can score he's at the top of his game when he's healthy you know coming off the bench because he can supply you 20 plus points he could be a starter if he wanted to very easily and you know when I think about everything that he brings to the Clippers and what he could bring to them even going forward this next season if they decide to keep him and don't ship him off in a trade package I think that He's going to be the biggest reason why they go far in the playoffs. And of course, you know, Kawhi and PG is going to be themselves. No doubt about that if they're healthy. But to me, if you ever really watch basketball like that, that third guy, those role players, those significant role players always make the difference when it comes to winning championships. Because at some point, you know, what the main players are doing is expected of the team that you're playing in a seven game series. The team playing against you in a seven game series knows that Kawhi and PG is going to go to hell off because that's what they do. They, are, they, they know how to put the ball in the basket. They're scorers. They are defenders. They're two-way players. They are elite for a reason. But, you know, what separates the great teams from the good teams is you got a bench behind you and you got that third guy that you can rely on that there is no discrepancy. And see, that's the one problem with the Clippers that they had years prior to this one. You know, sometime it was Marcus Morris a couple years ago. Sometime it was Reggie Jackson. Jackson, you see what I'm saying? It was never really solidified one third guy that they knew that they can trust every single night going into a game or going into a, a huge playoff game of, you know, big magnitude. They just didn't have that person. I mean, like I said, to me, Reggie Jackson was that for them, but Reggie Jackson had moments, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't that for them the whole time because Marcus Morris was expected to be that. That's the reason why I think they're definitely looking to shop Marcus Morris more than anything because he really didn't live up to the $60 million that they paid him for because he was really just supposed to be the third guy that they go to for a little bit of scoring and defense, you know, and play at a high level when asked upon. And really, he hasn't lived up to that because he's really been like, you know, Jekyll and Hyde, you know, up and down throughout the years. He's had he's had moments as well where he looked really good, where he looked pretty solid and he looked like he would be that third guy for the Clippers. But it never really materialized the way the Clippers envisioned it to. So then you get Reggie Jackson and then, you know, Reggie played well for him. I thought they would keep Reggie. I was actually surprised they traded Reggie. But they traded him and Luke Kennard and, they, you know, they got those pieces back, which, you know, the Mason Plumlee and all of them, which was a good, you know, not a bad trade at all. But at the same time, you know, you definitely, you know, missed uh, Reggie Jackson and uh, Luke Kennard there because it was definitely a big part of the culture. But um, either way, you know, they found that that third guy just wasn't really consistent enough for them. And plus, you know, the way Reggie played this past season before they traded him, they thought he really was like going to be like washed. So it's like, I think that's the reason why they let him go along with, you know, um, Luke Kennard. But either way, they got Norman Powell. And when they got Norman Powell on the team from last year, I feel like the Clippers already knew they were going to let go of Reggie Jackson and maybe a couple others because Norman Powell, they know he can be a third guy to go out there and score because he's shown it in the NBA Finals. He's shown it when he was on the uh, Toronto Raptors with Kawhi and that team winning the NBA Finals. So he's shown that he can be that type of guy, you know, when you need him to because he is just a lethal scorer. That's exactly what he is. And when you talk about you know, a lethal scorer off the bench like that, that just makes you a whole different animal to me, having somebody like him who can come out there and drop starter numbers. So I think the Clippers really would be dumb to let go of Norman Powell because of the type of value he brings. And like I said, you know, he is, he'll get, he, he'll surprise you and get a couple steals as well on defense. So, I mean, you know, he's, he, he's, he's, he's a very good role player. He's almost like in the same category as somebody like a, a Fred Van Vliet to me, somebody who can come off the 
the bench and drop 20 plus points any night of the week and not turn the ball over too much and, you know, play consistent within his role. And that's what you need out of a, a third guy. Play consistent within his role, do what he does best and expect that from him every night because you know he's capable of giving you that. And that's something that Marcus Morris and others might not have done on the Clippers prior so to me, now that they got Norman Powell, I don't think they should be traded. I don't think he should even be mentioned in a trade package. I think he should be the one left off. I think it should be more of the Marcus Morris's, you know, maybe the zoo box or maybe some other guys, you know, far down on the bench, you know, something of that caliber. The Clippers definitely need to keep somebody like Norman Powell because, you know, during the season, if Kawhi and PG take games off, which they might have to do to rest or something like that, you have somebody off the bench who can give you 25, 30 points. He can come in there and drop 25, 30 points easily and keep the offense going and, you know, keep everything flowing the way it's supposed to. So to me, it's rare to have a score like that off the bench. So if I were the Clippers, no matter what trade package teams are offering or what they're trying to, what proposals they're trying to throw at you, I would definitely keep Norman Powell. It's no reason for letting him go because he's one of those value type pieces where he definitely helps a team win a championship if he's a part of the roster, if the team is made up of the right stuff. It's no doubt about that because what he showed me in the 2019 um, playoffs when he was with Kawhi Leonard on the Raptors I mean he showed me he is definitely a legit player um, def definitely coming out of UCLA and um, coming in there and just being a scorer that he always has been even through college so um, the Clippers to me would be dumb for letting somebody like him go unless they got like a superstar like a Damian Lillard or somebody like that so honestly they need to try to find a way to keep him and just go from there but hey leave any comments in the comment section and we'll talk about it.